So I'm just doing some editing. I'm sitting here and uh, something that I pointed out during um, actually the early stages of the election was that I would like to see an analysis um, of the effect that Trump's border policies would have on the price of food. I never got that. In fact, it's not even a topic that really came up. Of course, if you restrict the flow of cheap labor into Southern California, then the price of food will have to rise dramatically because all of a sudden you'll have to pay people the minimum wage. Maybe people don't get it, right? When you buy food in the store, the people that process and pick and, you know, the, the farm workers are making a fraction of minimum wage because there's no they're operating outside of labor laws because they're illegal immigrants. If you burn in a regulatory system, then all of a sudden you have to pay them two or three times as much and the price of food is going to go way up. That is an actual factor on inflation. Labor costs? Labor costs have a big deal to do with prices, and therefore, if labor costs go up, then inflation goes up. There's been a lot of good criticisms of NAFTA, but nobody's ever claimed that NAFTA has increased the price of anything. And, you know, the other consequences of the trade agreement aside, it's actually very demonstrably clear that NAFTA has reduced the price of goods. It's led to massive job losses, but certainly has reduced the price of goods. My immediate guess is something in the range of 200 to 300% levels of inflation. And a perfect storm. Because then you get this situation, which is the worst possible situation. You get the situation where prices go up and there's no jobs. So people are unemployed and can't afford to eat at the same time. And then your recession turns into a depression. Because not only do you have poverty, but you have, well, not only do you have unemployment, but you also have poverty. Crippling po poverty. We already have poverty. Could you imagine the consequences of food going up 200 or 300% on that poverty? This will be a Trump legacy one way or another. You can count on this. Trump's policies will produce brutal inflation. Now, I know they've been saying that about Obama, right? But these are these are people with, with, with funny ideas about money, that they think money's real. You know, the people that want to go back to a gold standard. You know, people with screwy ideas of money. And they think that Obama's policies, um, they thought that Obama printing money would produce inflation, which is just wrong. It's just bad economics, right? What are the things that will actually produce inflation? Uh, if you look at the immigration reform, uh, tariffs, okay, these are things that will actually produce inflation by, improve, by, by increasing production costs, right? I'm going to stop and start because my battery is getting... Uh, I thought maybe I could do this, but I'm not going to, so let's stop and start here. And this is my last try for my... Uh, for my questionable batteries here. Until it gets me through the rant, they won't have to get me through anything else. Let's, uh, let's hope it at least holds for that. Normally, if it gets it this far, it gets me at least 20 minutes. So It's looking like we either got a half or a full. It's, like I say, it's a lot less try, so hopefully it works out. Right, so... Trump will lead inflation, so... Or so Trump will create inflation, that's clear. So I hit the internet looking for information about Trump and infl inflation. And I get this bunch of stuff about like bonds. I don't really care about bonds, right? It's not what I'm talking about at all. Right, so inflation means two different things. Inflation might mean um, your CPI, your, your, your basket of goods. Or inflation might mean that the value of the, the dollar decreases. These are not the same thing. And the media tends to can... A lot of times when you read articles, and even articles at financial papers, 
they they get confused when they see inflation they 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 will read reports or papers where they're using inflation in the monetary sense and they will think it means the CPI and the baskets of goods and when you read the reports like like the paper like the, the the article in the paper it's clear as day that they don't understand what they're saying right and then you read the reports and you just want to bang your head against the wall because they don't understand that that these two different concepts of inflation are well now my battery's gone these two different concepts of inflation um some people have tried to tie them together but i mean they're different ideas and they're, they're broadly understood as being different um i'm going to have to throw these batteries away um I've got about 10 hours, so let's swap and uh, see, see. It, 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 yeah, okay, so, it should be just about done, so let me switch. Yeah, so I guess I'll need to get some more batteries at the, at the beginning of December. Uh, the, the brand to avoid is EverReady. Do not buy EverReady batteries. Um, these likewise batteries in here have uh, been much better for much longer. I got like a half an hour, so I don't, I don't think this is going to take me half an hour, but, uh, I thought I could do it on a, on a, on a dying pair. So. so yeah, I'm not talking about, you know, make-believe money here. These bonds that don't exist, just, just the numbers on the screen. It's not what I'm talking about. That's paper economy, it's irrelevant, nobody cares. The, the Chinese will keep buying them, they can sell all their bonds as they want, it doesn't make any difference, it doesn't affect anything except the bond market. Okay, The only thing that the bond market affects is the bond market. And, you know, if people want to be stupid, then they can lose their money. It doesn't make any difference, right? The truth is that, in the end, these people are probably just throwing their money away into the river, into the Yangtze. They're... Th this is a panic that... It's a panic that will not have any effect on the real economy, okay? And it's a panic that will not have any effect on anything that's going to affect real people. It's just stupid rich people being stupid. That's all that is, okay? That's not what I'm talking about at all. Like I say, I think that the confusion is probably pretty deep, because I know that when I read these papers, these financial, like, you read a, any financial journals, like the Wall Street Journal, and they make this error all the time. They connect monetary inflation to the CPI, and they don't understand that these are different ideas. Like I say, there have been attempts to link them, but that's considered flunky economics nowadays. It was in vogue, like, in the 70s. But that was, like, 50 years ago, right? Nobody takes this serious. Nobody's taken this seriously for decades. If anybody ever took it seriously at all, right? What I'm talking about is real inflation on the price of real goods. Both necessities and luxuries. Things that affect real people. Not numbers on a screen for these stupid investors. I mean, listen, okay? I don't give a fuck about what the dollar is trading for on the money markets. I don't have any dollars. And if I did, I wouldn't trade them on the money markets. What I give a fuck about is what the price of strawberries is at the grocery store. That's what I mean when I say inflation, okay? Not the price of your dollars and your exchange that doesn't have any effect on the real world. You, know, you got less numbers on a screen? You think I give a fuck? I don't. You think the world gives a fuck? You think the economy gives a fuck? Nobody gives a fuck. What I give a fuck about is the price of strawberries at the grocery store. And that's going to rise in ways that we haven't seen since the 70s. Because we haven't had to pay people since the 70s. And what that means is in, in ways that a lot of us have never seen. I've never seen that kind of inflation. I clue in in the 90s. I clue in with NAFTA. When wages were coming down and prices were coming down with wages. And like I said, there's ways to adjust to this. I mean, I'm not saying that we want a, an economy that structurally underpays the workers. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying is that the worst possible thing you can do is increase prices first. Because then you end up with people without jobs that, have to over, that, that they can't afford to buy food. What you want to do is you want to create the jobs first and then 
increase the prices, but his policies won't do that. But we're back to this, you know, I'm, I'm still reading through these, these papers and I'm just... Okay, guys. Stimulus does not create inflation. That is flunky economics. It's been contradicted by empirical evidence. It's been theoreti theoretically debunked. It's been ripped apart from every which way. It's wrong. Printing money does not create inflation. That's wrong. And if you were to try to do that at a school nowadays, you would fail. They would fail you for writing a paper that, that argues this point. This is wrong. But, I mean, it, 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 it's kind of... We can argue this academic point. It's assuming that he's going to get a... It's assuming he's going to try and get a stimulus through Congress. I don't even think he's going to try and get a stimulus through Congress. I'd like to see a stimulus, Sure. A big part of the reason why I argued for voting against him is because I didn't think he would put a stimulus through. So, stimulus will not create inflation, but he's not going to do that anyways, okay? What will cause inflation? Well, tariffs will cause inflation, because it will. if you put a tariff, who pays for it? It's the people that are going to buy it that are going to pay for it. If you slap a tariff on Chinese goods, and the price of Chinese goods will exist. That's the point of a tariff. The purpose of a tariff is to cause inflation. And immigration form reform will also cause inflation by altering the wage structure. There's an argument here that... Um, <clears throat> the reason I... You might look at that and be like, you know... Taxresearch.org.uk. Why should I, you know, a blog at this? Why should I take that that site seriously? The reason I posted that is because they bring attention to Japan, um, which is the case study that um, I mean. I, there's a lot of different arguments you can use, but Japan is useful for the specific purpose. The Japanese have been trying to use monetary policy to inflate forever, and it doesn't work, right? They're printing, they want inflation in Japan, so they're printing money like crazy. And are they getting inflation? They're not. In America, the fear, you know, and you know, in lots of other places like Canada, the UK, the UK, um, you know, the fear is that we can't print too much money because it'll create inflation. In Japan, they want inflation, and they're trying to create it by by printing as much money as they can, and it's not working. They've been doing it for like ten years. Print, 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 print. It has had no effect on inflation. And it's one of the you know most contemporary arguments for the um, understanding. I don't want to say claim or observation. It's an understanding that there is really no connection at all between the money supply and the inflation. And if you think about it, you should have never really thought there ever was in the first place. It doesn't really make sense when you think about it. Again, what are the things that are going to increase the price of things? Tariffs. You know, it changes in cost and production. One of the big things is the cost of energy. But the money, the, the, this funny argument about supply and demand using you know the, the supply of money so their supply of money increases so therefore it's now this is it, it, it's like trying to be meta on something that doesn't get meta right I mean there, there's meta and then there's just using a bad model right it's using a bad model and then calling it meta. And it's not like... It's not like we've had a, you know, a shift in understanding. No, it, nobody took this idea seriously, okay? The smart economists knew better from the start. Nobody ever thought this was a good idea. Nobody ever believed this. And it's a lie. 
you know, it, the, the lie of Reaganomics. This idea that people ever, no, nobody ever thought this. <laughs> and so there's no, there's no conventional wisdom to overturn because it was never the conventional wisdom in the fucking first place, okay? It was a crazy idea based on something that never made sense. Like I say, it's p people thinking it's meta, but it was just a bad model. Although, what is true is that if you increase the number of dollars that are on the market, then it might trade for less. Might. But that's not the same thing as an inflation in the price of goods. Especially not when you're dealing with domestic supply, right? It doesn't matter. Because Trump isn't going to be able to pass stimulus. And I don't even think that Trump wants to pass stimulus. If you wanted Trump to spend money... You should have given him a Democratic Congress. Or actually, let me let me take a step back. Trump may pass stimulus for himself, so he might say that you know the government's going to spend a lot of money, which will essentially um, work out to being a you know a, a lateral transfer of money into like a into a Vodka's bank account or something. That might happen. I can see that happening, right? Or there might be large increases in construction spending with Trump as the contractor. Maybe. I can see that. But broadly speaking, I don't mean like that's not going to get through Congress, right? I mean, I let, let me rephrase. If he, if he was going to try and pass stimulus spending, that's what it would look like, right? It would look like basically corporate welfare for himself. That's what that's what his stimulus spending would look like if it were to happen. That'll never get through Congress. Paul Ryan won't let that get through. There's no way. And if I mean if you if you wanted Trump to spend money, if you wanted loose strings, if you wanted money flowing all around all over the place if that's really what you wanted, then you should have given him a Democratic Congress. Rather, you gave him what is probably the most fiscally conservative Congress in the history of Congresses. So, I mean, if this is what you voted for, you, you, fu you, you fucked up, you know. You should have taken a closer look at it. Maybe you didn't realize that the president has a Congress. You know, it... Maybe you thought Trump was, you were electing Trump dictator and he could just spend whatever he wanted. In fact, in the United States, the Congress has huge amounts of control over the purse, right? Trump will not determine how much money gets spent. The Congress will determine how much money gets spent. And they don't want to spend any money at all. Donald Trump will be allowed to cut taxes, but he won't be allowed to spend, except on the military. He'll be allowed to spend on that. Remember, Reagan had a Democratic Congress, or mostly a Democratic Congress. That was a big key to his deficits, right? He was able to get it all run through the House. And a lot of these Democrats were, you know, military-industrial types. They were down with, with spending, you know, for their, you know, Military contractors, it creates jobs, the whole thing, right? But I'm a socialist, guys, okay? Let's not pretend that I'm going to push back on... Like, you know, if, if we end up in this situation where there's this opposition to Trump because he's going to spend too much? No. 
I'm a socialist. Money and debt are just social constructs, so I'll compromise on Keynes, even though I'm, you know, in a good way to the left of that. And I actually argued in this space specifically, explicitly, that you should vote for Clinton for the explicit, specific, sole, single reason that she's more likely to push for deficit spending. That was my lesser evil calculation. That's why I said you should vote for Hillary. It's because you'll get more deficit spending with her. Because deficit spending is not inflationary, and it's exactly what the global economy needs. I posted here a dream cabinet, and it had Paul Krugman as Treasury Secretary. So you think I'm going to sit here and try and criticize Trump for not spending enough money? No, I'm, I, I'm, I'm expecting to... No, wait, that, that came out wrong. Do you think I'm going to sit here and criticize Trump for spending too much money? No, I'm expecting to sit here and criticize Trump for not spending enough money. I'm not going to flip-flop and oppose deficit spending on partisan lines. I'd be pleasantly surprised if Trump comes out and starts pushing stimulus spending. I don't expect it, okay? Rather, I think that all evidence suggests that his deficit spending promises were empty rhetoric and that a Pence-Ryan McConnell axis of dumbassery is actually going to be pushing through some brutal austerity. Do I think that Donald Trump is going to spend? No. I think that you're going to get austerity from Donald Trump, except maybe on the military. And like I say, maybe corporate welfare for himself. So the markets are out to lunch here on some Clinton machine Kool-Aid. I guess uh, you hear this term in American politics sometimes, it's the silly season. I think um, that there's a silly season upon us here. People are upset that the Republican Congress is going to spend too much after they've spent the last 20 years, really, preventing any spending at all. On what planet? Not this one. So that's not what I meant by Trump will create inflation, okay? It's just what's coming up on Google when I search for Trump and inflation. My brain is exploding by these stupid Friedmanite articles of this fucking idiocy being thrown around in the financial press by people that really ought to know better than that. What I meant is that his fiscal policies, his trade policies, and also his labor policies are likely to be inflationary. NAFTA is probably safe. You know, some minor tweaks or something like that. Maybe he'll write Trudeau a letter. He'll sign the TPP too. That's and I don't think that that's an issue. But that massive tariff on China is something that I'd be leaning towards taking seriously. See, the tariff on China is complementary to the TPP. What is the TPP? The TPP is a containment strategy. It's you know the U.S. You no, know, picking off all the countries around China and moving them into uh, a strict um, U.S. business alliance. So that all these countries trade with us instead of them. Well, if you're going to do that, if you're going to try and you know create this containment strategy around China, the next logical step is a tariff. So those things make sense together. I don't know if he understands that or not, you see. But it's actually rather geopolitically strategic. If you were going to ask me, well, once the TPP is in place, what's the next logical thing? The next logical thing is a massive tariff on China. And, you know, increasing military buildup around the region. That's why the TPP is there. And yeah, then the Fed can buy the bonds back. It's a non-issue. You know what you can do with the bonds? You can make a pretend corporation and then have that pretend corporation buy them for five cents. Five cents a bond. You know, that's, you're just wasting bites. Make it, make it a half a cent a bond. Why not? What, what's the world going to do? They're going to cut, cut America's credit rating? <laughs> for 
right. <laughs> That's hilarious.